Hello everyone, how are you doing today? My name is Makeda Valletta, also known as The Body Scientist, and I'm live on my IG right now, um, The Body Scientist. I will save this and repost this to my YouTube. If you're not familiar with me, I am a trainer, I'm a nutritionist, I'm a sacred sexual educator, I'm a dancer, um, I'm a lot of things, right? Um, I also have another page called The Renaissance Amazon. On that page, I, it's my artistic side, okay, because I'm a dancer, I'm a muse, I pose for photographers. So on that page, I have that, and I do videos talking about social issues, sexuality, um, stuff like that, social commentary. This page, I focus more on, like, health science stuff, right? Um, this video, I wanted to do on my other page, The Renaissance Amazon, but I have a block from doing lives. So I'm doing it here because it's a really important conversation a really important message I wanted to do it as a live and it kind of crosses um, both you know the health side of things and also social commentary sexuality things okay so with that being said I'm going to say that right now I want to talk about this Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears situation okay and how disgusted I am and triggered okay so for those of you who are unaware Ari Spears who I didn't even know who he was until a couple of days ago when he was dissing Lizzo. I know that he's supposed to be a famous comedian. I never heard of him. And I, I know black comedians, but I heard he was on Mad TV. I never watched Mad TV. I don't, I don't know. But I don't, the little I know of him, I don't find him funny. Um, but Tiffany Haddish, I never found her funny. Okay? Never, ever, ever did I find Tiffany Haddish funny. You know who else I don't find funny? Kevin Hart. Okay? I've always felt like Kevin Hart had to have sold his soul to somebody to be the highest paid comedian in the history of comedy when he's not funny. Especially when you look at the legacy of black comedians. There's so many black comedians that are hilarious. You could look at old episodes of Martin right now and be dying every two minutes, right? So <clears throat> these sexual molestation uh, charges came out um, against Tiffany Haddish and Aerie Spears, okay? When I saw it a couple nights ago, it was like one in the morning. Um, I saw it in my Instagram feed when I was... Uh, done filming some sections for my, my booty meat fitness class and I'm leaving out the gym with my friends and we're about to go They're driving me home and I see this come up in my feed Now I just want to say that Thankfully, I have never been sexually molested, right? But as a sacred sexual educator, okay? I've been educating around sexuality issues since I was in high school when I was in high school in New York City I used to travel around the city and educate my peers <clears throat> about different topics on sexuality. I got paid to do that, right? And then as an adult, I just continued to study sexuality. So like, and that's something that I feel like is one of my, I guess one of the things that I do. But, okay, um, and probably like in 2007, I started teaching a class to women called Central Strength Training, which uses what people call jade eggs or yoni eggs. I call them naughty eggs. They're crystal eggs that women work with vaginally to help strengthen the muscles of their pelvic floor and help them get more control of their vaginal muscles. And also, helps women with trauma. That's something that I started to learn in doing that work. In doing that work, so many women started telling me the most disturbing stories about being molested as children. Sometimes it was by their father. Sometimes it was by their stepfather. Sometimes their mother encouraged it. Okay, I heard some really disturbing stories from people. And sometimes I heard this from people that I wasn't even working with in that way. Sometimes I remember there was a girl that I, I was training. She was just my client doing regular fitness stuff. And she started telling me about how her father used to perform oral sex in her when she was growing up. I remember, then I started knowing men. I remember uh, uh, someone, I don't want to say too much about anybody, but I remember someone years ago, a man who was telling me about things that happened to him. And really disturbing things where I'm just like, I don't even know what to say. And I don't, some things that are so disturbing, I don't think there's anything you can say. I don't know if any amount of therapy is going to make them better. And I used to always wonder, why is this cross in my path so much? Because it's not like it's something I can relate to. It's not like I've been through that and I can... So I don't feel like it's, it, it was my calling to help people with those situations because I can't even relate to it. But I know that I am disgusted when I see nobody ever wants to believe that somebody is a child molester. Everybody, oh, that person couldn't have done it. Oh, people always want to be not believing it. Because I used to always ask myself, like, as a health science person, when there's an epidemic of something, I always question, where did that come from? Why is this an epidemic? Why is everybody, I question those things. 
So with the, with molestation, the fact that I feel like if you weren't molested as a child, you are a minority, okay? And then let's not even talk about the grown women who are molesting little boys. You know, a lot of times, because um, almost every grown man that I know has told me, starting with my dad, has told me stories about being a little boy and the teenage girl or a grown woman doing something or they're, they are um, a teenage boy and it's a grown woman. I hear the stories all the time. Now, boys, I would say in my experience, 90% of the time, they don't seem to be damaged by it. You know, they seem to, it's like they're talking about it like it was a good thing. Um, I've known a couple who were so young, like they didn't really didn't understand what was going on and it was like their mother's friend and it wasn't okay. But most men, in my experience of, of people that, what has come my path, what I've observed, most men seem really disturbed when it was a man that did it to them, okay? Now, now, so when I first heard this, I remember thinking to myself, like, you know, I didn't know who he was until Lizzo. Um, you know, a lot of times people's first thing is, oh, they're trying to get money from them. That's what people always think. Every time a celebrity or somebody rich gets accused of something, everybody thinks, oh, they're trying to get money from them. But I don't know what's wrong with people. People really lack critical thinking skills and the ability to observe the obvious, okay? Now, one other thing. When I was in college, I was, I was a coaching science minor for like a short minute, right? And they made us, in one of my coaching science classes, they made us take a class. I mean, they made us watch a documentary about pedophiles, okay? And I remember in this video, it was saying that pedophiles like to take jobs with well, they have access to children, so coaches, teachers, people that work at Disney World, I don't know. They, they take jobs where they have access to a lot of children and where they can gain the trust of the parent. Think about it. A lot of times coaches and teachers gain the trust of parents, right? So a lot of them purposely seek out those type of jobs. And, you know, there's certain things, there's certain warning signs about pedophiles. And I know that when I was growing up, my grandmother, okay, I remember my grandmother used to talk to me about what's appropriate touch. I was not appropriate touch, okay? And my grandmother always used to say to me, like, if I, we were watching a movie and some kid was getting molested in a movie and they were being told not to say anything, like, I remember, like, a Lifetime movie or something came on. My grandmother used to always say to me, listen, if somebody touches you inappropriately, I don't care who it is. I want you to tell me. Remember her saying that, I don't care who it is. I don't care how they threaten you. I don't care what they say to you. I don't care how they try to scare you. Tell me. And she was dead serious. So she said, tell me that, you know, every so often. And as an adult, when I see how many kids have been molested, I'm just like, I don't understand. Like, either a lot of parents are asleep at the wheel, okay? Then you have parents who don't care and encourage it or parents who are doing it, all right? So you have all those things. Um, so with this Tiffany hat, so, 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 but what I was going to say was I remember back in the, like maybe the nineties, maybe, maybe the late eighties or early nineties, whatever. I just remember a lot of, um, child stars, you know, coming on television. I remember the, the actors from, um, different strokes. I remember them coming on some, one of the, one of the talk shows and they all had been like heroin addicts and coke addicts. They were serious drug addicts. And they were all talking about they became like that from what happened to them on these sets. That drugs was encouraged and all kinds of things happened. So there's so many people that have been saying this. I remember there was this white actor, I can't remember what his name was, years ago that was constantly talking about this. Um, you have someone like Raz B who talks about what happened with B2K over and over again. Um, and lately, I never watched the Disney Channel in my life, okay? I've never watched the Disney Channel. I don't know anything about the shows in the Disney Channel. I don't know anything about it. But I do know that um, lately I've been seeing a lot of articles coming out with people who were Disney actors saying Disney's not safe for children, talking about certain videos they were forced to record as kids. One uh, former Disney actress, mother, her, her mother died recently, and she went viral for saying that she was glad that her mother was dead. And people thought that was crazy, but then she said that her mother used to give her vaginal exams and breast massages until she was like an older teenager and take a shower with her, okay? And her mother used to encourage certain things. And she was, and she talked about, you know, stuff that happened at Disney that was inappropriate. I remember when I learned about pedophiles in college, they told us a lot of them worked for Disney World even. Like kids get snatched up at Disney World and molested all the time. A lot of pedophiles work there, okay? So, whew. So with me knowing all of that in the background, when I first heard this, um, I was just like, 
and 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 I saw that the 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 mother said that she was like, you know, best friends with Tiffany Haddish, and you know, and as black people, even probably other races, I don't know, but I know black people for sure. We have extended family. Um, uh, we sorry, we have extended family. We have aunts and stuff that's not really our blood. That might have been friends with our parents since before we were born, who our parents trust us with. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have that. And it seems that Tiffany Haddish was somebody who was really good friends with the mom. And the mom really trusted her. And she told the mom that, you know, they were going to do... It was First of all, it was a sister and brother. Okay, that's the other thing. In case you don't know the details of the story. It was a 14-year-old girl and a 7-year-old boy. And I'm reading how the mother was friends. And the mother was, like, really upset that she trusted Tiffany with her kids. And that, you know, there was this lawsuit. So... Yesterday I'm on Clubhouse, I hear people talking about the video, and I wasn't looking for it, I'm just listening to what people were saying, and a friend of mine got like, you know, because they're scrubbing the video off the internet. If you go on YouTube now, you'll see some YouTubers that will show you clips, but it's hard to find the entire video, or even half of it, because they're scrubbing it off the internet. But a friend of mine sent me like a two minute clip of it, and it was highly disturbing, okay? And there's absolutely no excuse there's absolutely nothing Tiffany Haddish can say. There's absolutely nothing that Ari Spears can say. And honestly, I feel like they both just need to kill themselves, okay? Because there's no coming back from this. There's a lot of times that people have, you know, charges against them and claims, but, you know, there's no video out there. To me, what Tiffany and Aries did is even worse than R. Kelly, okay? So... She groomed these kids, and that's one of the things you know about pedophiles. They groom the kids. They can even groom the parents. If you go look at this film, what I saw, okay? Now, the, the, the film was called a mind, The Mind of a Pedophile, okay? It was called The Mind of a Pedophile. <clears throat> and in it, I look at it, I see Tiffany Haddish leaves her son with Uncle So-and-So. Right, who was played by Aerie Spears. And she gets eye level with the little boy and says, Listen, I want you to do whatever Uncle So and so tells you to do, okay? Whatever Uncle So and so tells you to do, I want you to do it. And the little boy's like, Okay. And then it, sh it shows the little boy innocently, Tiffany Haddish walks away all happy, and it shows the little boy innocently looking up at the uncle. And the uncle is looking at the little boy, like, making the Bill Cosby eye rolling. Like, the way Bill Cosby made his face in the pudding commercials, he's doing that. He's looking at the little boy like, I'm about to molest you, okay? That's the way he's looking at this little boy. Then it skips to a scene where the little boy is on the floor in the living room playing in his underwear. He's playing with toys with his underwear on. He has a truck in his hand. The little boy has a toy truck. The little boy is doing this up and down kind of jerk off. Like, like he's jerking off the truck, right? He's playing with it. Now, he's doing this. Aries Spears is, Aries, whatever his name is, that crusty, ugly man, is sitting in, on the sofa, acting like he's reading the newspaper. So he has a newspaper open. He's acting like he's reading the paper. Little boy's in front of him on the floor. He, there's cutouts, and the, there's cutouts in the paper so that Aries, Aries is looking through the, the holes in the newspaper, looking at the little boy like a pervert. He's all bug-eyed. He's licking his lips, okay? And in the background... R. Kelly Bump and Grind is playing, okay? R. Kelly's Bump and Grind song is playing this whole time. So now you now show the little boy rolling around in his underwear. The little boy had his legs open. He's rolling around on the floor in his underwear. Totally inappropriate, inappropriate and not funny at all. Then it skips to another scene where Aries is sitting on the sofa, okay, still like he's reading this paper, looking through these peepholes. But the little boy is sitting on the floor between his legs, okay? The little boy is sitting on the floor between his legs and Aries takes some baby oil and throws it on his back like he like he jerked off on the boy's back. Throws some oil on his back and starts massaging oil to a little boy's back. Then it skips to a scene where the little boy is in the tub. Okay, now I didn't see the whole video. I saw clips of it. So I don't know that the clips are in the correct order and then since then I watched other videos where I've seen other clips. Hold on a minute. I have to sneeze. I think I'm developing allergies as an adult. I never had allergies, but lately I've been having these sneezing attacks. Okay, I'm not going to sneeze. Okay, so Dan shows a little boy in the tub, and Tiffany Haddish is talking to the little boy. And Tiffany Haddish leaves the boy. She leaves the bathroom. 
and says she was going somewhere. So now Aerie Spears, the uncle, comes in the bathroom, okay? Sits next to the tub, okay? Like sits on the, sits on the side of the tub where the little boy is bathing. And starts telling the little boy about, so he knows somebody that's in charge of something, some, 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 something about touching and not telling. He says something like that. Then, um, then he ended up getting in the tub with the little boy, okay? He gets in the tub with the little boy. Then, there, I mean, it's just like all the, then I haven't seen this scene, but I heard there were scenes where a little boy was rubbing oil on him. And I, there's a scene where a little boy is sitting on the floor looking at Aries in this lustful way, okay? So it's just completely sick. And there's so many times that you see Tiffany Haddish like continuously leaving the little boy with the uncle. And I've never seen anything like it. Nobody has ever seen anything like this shit, okay? It's absolutely freaking disgusting. And to me, you know, we've been hearing for a long time that in Hollywood and the music industry, a lot of people do a lot of... Uh, beyond trifling, disgusting, perverted, horrible things to people in order to get on top. And I've heard for a long time that record labels, Hollywood, they will film you, like if you want to be a star, they will film you doing something that is so outrageous so that they can keep that and blackmail you. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you, you, you don't do what you're supposed to do, that will get released, okay? You said, what was the point of them doing this? I don't know. Like I, it was supposed to be a PSA, they said. But many people have made the point that if you want to make a PSA, because at the end of this video, it says, be careful with who you leave your kids with. But many people have said, okay, if you want to make a PSA about it, first of all, you didn't have to actually have kids playing kids. You could have had adults playing kids. People do that. And you didn't have to do it the way, you didn't have to take advantage of children. Okay? And just, because the thing is that these, the, the girl in the, 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 this boy was seven years old. Okay? He had a 14 year old sister. This lawsuit, there's a lawsuit right now being brought against Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears by the girl who's now 22 years old. This video was made in 2013. The boy is now 15 and the girl is now 22, okay? She is the legal guardian of the brother. So that says some things too, that she is now the, the legal guardian of her brother. Her brother is so messed up that, so, like, so damaged, both of them, of course, that he has to put band-aids over all the cameras on his phones or any electronics because he's afraid of being filmed. Yeah, it was the hardest video you've ever watched. Exactly. There's nothing that Tiffany Haddish or Ari Spears or their attorneys, and let's talk about attorneys, okay? I think some attorneys are horrible people because how could you defend that? Like, how, like what in on God's green earth, and I don't even say that. Let me say the goddesses green earth. What in the world could you say to defend that? And the girl is like, you know, she can't have relationships with people. She doesn't trust anything or anybody she's afraid that she'll be led down the path of deception like she was with them now from what i understand about tiffany haddish i heard that her father molested her and she's all of her father's ass claiming atrian because her father's atrian and saying she's jewish and all this stuff i heard her brother had sex with her too so a lot of times people who've been molested which is again the same thing with, with r kelly okay R. Kelly's sister made him give him oral se give her oral sex, okay? If something like that is happening to you when you're a kid, I also, in some ways, sometimes can't completely blame them for having these warped sense, this warped mentality of what's normal. If something like that happened to you when you're a kid, somebody could say that, oh, that happened to you when you're a kid, you should know better. Yeah, you could say that in theory. I have not, I don't have firsthand experience with this, so I don't always know how things affect people. But what I do know is that when you're a kid, that's when you're being programmed about what's normal to you. So you can have a warped uh, idea of what's normal by having some stuff like that happening to you. Now, but most people that that has happened to, they're not happy about it, so I don't know why they would continue that, but I don't know, because again, this is not something that I have firsthand experience with. I'm just telling you what tends to happen, right? So Tiffany Haddish has a background uh, of, of incest and molestation in her own life. Now, the thing that's disturbing to me, though, is that when I first saw this, I saw it at allhiphop.com. And I look at every single comment. Every single comment people wrote was, oh, that sounds far-fetched. Oh, Lizzo's fans has something to do with that. Leave them alone. Oh, um, they, people didn't believe it. People just, oh, don't believe it. I don't think that they would do that. I don't think she would do that. I don't believe it. Oh, that's it. They're always going to give you a sex scandal. And that's what is ridiculous to me. 
I feel like, first of all, in the black community, I'm going to say, I feel like nobody believes anything unless it happened to a black man. If it happened to a black man, oh, he's a victim, he's a victim, he's a victim. But when something happened, people ride behind it. You see black men get shot by the police. Some of them are acting kind of foolish, okay? Some of them are doing shit that's less than smart. Some of them, if they did that shit in Jamaica, or they did it in Russia, or they did it in Nigeria, they would never be seen again, okay? So the, but somehow black people in America, they act like, you know, black men can say whatever they want to the police and act crazy and they get shot, all that shouldn't happen. But then, you know, if it's a black woman or if it's children, people don't want to believe it. They don't want to get behind it. It's so freaking hypocritical. Just like the other day I saw, like Megan Thee Stallion has, um, I don't, I don't watch uh, superhero shit, right? So I don't know, like, but apparently Megan Thee Stallion has... I guess it's a series, a She-Hulk series. And Megan Thee Stallion is showing She-Hulk how to twerk. And all these black people were so upset. Oh, she's disrespecting herself. She's degrading herself. Blah, 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 blah. When black women all around the world shake and gyrate. We do it even when men aren't around. I've been around so many black women where it's just women and they're twerking for each other. There are healing properties in our dances, okay? Like, this is my health science page. So I said, it. you know, my other page I talk more about you know, social issues, culture, anthropology. But I'm going to tell you, as a student of dances of the African diaspora, particularly in the Americas, right? So I, I have, since 2006, I have extensively studied black dancers from Haiti, from the Dominican Republic, from Puerto Rico, from Colombia, from Brazil, from Peru, from um, uh, Cuba, and the Congo, in the American South, the, the American period, because we have lots of black dancers here. We have... Lindy Hop, which you guys know is Swing from Harlem. You have Chicago Step, which derived from that. You have New Orleans Second Line. I mean, you got Bounce, you got Twerk. There's so many things. But I'm like, if you see black girls in Brazil dancing in bikinis, uh, doing samba, people say it's cultural. People don't say that those black girls in Brazil who are doing samba in bikinis, shaking and driving, people don't say those girls are disrespecting themselves. But if it's a girl in Atlanta or Houston dancing to hip hop and, and, and twerking, oh, now she's disrespecting herself. It's ridiculous. Because first of all, there's medicine in those dances. There's a reason why black girls all around the world do that, but in the Americas in particular, it's a way to reset your energy fields, to shake off trauma. We store most of our, I mean, our, our most of our blood runs through our hips. The, the, it, it, it helps with childbirth, recovering from it, moving sexual energy, I mean, all kinds of things. There's healing properties in it. Dancing is what keeps me sane, okay? Like, and especially dances of the diaspora that involve shaking and gyrating. It's called shake medicine, it's a real thing. But people are so upset about that. But then, you know, uh, somebody like, like, like Dr. Dre, who ha is known to be a woman beater, okay? The stuff that Dre has done, unacceptable. But people don't want to talk about that. They just want to praise him. Oh, he's a genius. He performs at the Super Bowl. Nobody brings that up. Nobody brings that up. You have white boy Eminem making fun of what happened to D. Barnes in the song. Like, everybody just ignores all that because it's a black woman. Let the tables be turned if somebody's talking about a black man like that who has something like that happen to him. You know what I'm saying? It's just really hypocritical. But the thing, the fact of the matter is, I'm just like, I'm just trying to understand like how everybody just jumped to the conclusion that, oh, they're trying to extort them. And they don't believe it. And I'm like, this is the reason. When I'm always trying to figure out why so many people get molested, this is the reason. Nobody ever wants to believe that their goddamn pastor, their preacher. Most of the people I know that have been molested were born, were raised religious too. That's the other thing. And a lot of them, it was like somebody connected to a religious institution. I'm not saying all the time, but there's a lot of that as well. But people don't want to believe it was their pastor. People don't want to believe it was their brother or this person or that person. You know what I'm saying? But obviously there's a lot of goddamn pedophiles and child molesters amongst us because it seems like people that haven't been molested are like 15% of the population. Okay? So people need to open their eyes and observe the obvious. And the fact that people just always, you know, jump to this conclusion that, pe that people are lying is crazy. Now, we all know that people do lie, but it just seems like the benefit of the doubt is always, is given too quickly with stuff like that. And especially we have to put things in context. We're talking about the entertainment industry. For decades, for decades, people have been talking about how the entertainment industry preys on children. And not only preys on children, I also think they prey on families poor families, especially like single moms who might not have much and people are desperate and naive and they prey on them. 
because I'm not a fan of B2K. They're not my generation. I didn't listen to them. I don't really know their music. But I know when I heard their story, it seemed like all of them came from a down and out situation, teenage mom or something, and you desperate, and they take advantage. Okay? And especially back then, when the only way you could really get to money back then is if somebody put you on. Now, because of the internet, people can become a star on their own. You know, back then, you had to have, uh, and that's the thing, when people say, like when people talk now, people diss people who become Instagram famous or they become famous on the internet. People act like that's not valid. And oh, that's, it's not easy. It's not easy to go to have millions of followers and fans online. No matter how talented you are, that shit is not easy. But when you had record labels and stuff doing that, actually, that's easier to take advantage of people. Because the people that got put on, it wasn't always about talent. It was about who was willing to do the bullshit. In order to get this contract, in order to get promoted. Because we all know there's been people who have been super talented, whether it be in Hollywood or whether it be in music, who didn't get the notoriety and their career didn't make it till people would have expected. And that may be because they weren't going to do that. They weren't going to go that far. You know, um, it's kind of like... And that's why it's also kind of easy to, in some ways to take advantage of athletes, right? Um, especially ones where you have a sport where there's a judge. And this, think about what happened with uh, the women's gym, Olympic gymnastics team. The stuff that came out that all these girls in USA Gymnastics have been molested for years by the sports medicine doctor. Well, how could that happen? See, I don't think that people do enough analytical conversations about stuff like this to learn from it when stuff like this happens. Now, the, the sports medicine doctor was telling these girls he was doing vaginal exams and he's doing these things. And you would think, to, I think to myself, what would make them believe that? But you think about a, a, a sport with judges, for all you know, he could be telling them he's going to help them win. Or, you know, something, because when you're playing basketball or something, judges can't help you, really. You have to perform. You run a track, you've got to run the fastest. But when you have a sport where you're being judged and you're trying to please the judges, I don't like sports with judges for that reason. It can get very political. Now, you're trying to please the judges, then that could be a way to take advantage. And... Again, remember, pedophiles take jobs so they have access to children and they can gain the trust of parents. So, of course, parents are going to trust the USA Gymnastics sports medicine doctor. Of course, people are going to trust the coaches and the trainers. You know, parents trust them. And people can be charming and they, they do that. So, people have to keep their eyes open and observe the obvious. And people really need to, like, I mean, like I said, I, I'm triggered by the video and I haven't been molested. I can't imagine the amount of people out there who have, how triggering it must be for them. And so, people, it annoys me how I know so many people that this has happened to, but then so many people don't believe shit. And I'm like, no wonder this is an epidemic. No wonder. And it seems to me, there's all kinds of abuse, but it seems to me when people have been sexually abused, particularly as children, they seem to never get over it. It's a lifelong struggle for them to get over this trauma. These children that were involved in this stuff with Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears, when you read about this lawsuit and how damaged they are, it seems like they may not ever recover from it. And so it's just crazy to me how people can just do that to children. Whew. It's just crazy. Because children are at the mercy of their guardians. I know that, and, th and this is the reason why people who have good parents, if you have good parents who protected you and made sure you ate and, you know, and thrive, I think you owe your parents everything. Which is why I couldn't understand the issue with Kobe and his parents. I mean, to my understanding, I didn't hear anything about them that seemed like they were bad parents. They, he wouldn't be who he was if it wasn't for his parents because his parents made sure he ate so he could play basketball and he had a safe, loving home so he could be the athlete that he was. So to me, I never understood why it was this thing where he was like cutting his parents off or whatever. I don't care if they sold his trophy, whatever. If I was rich like that, my parents could have any and everything. They'd come before everybody because I wouldn't be in that situation if it wasn't for them. So many people have horrible parents. If you watch the news nowadays... Every day I'm hearing a story about a mother or a father who has murdered their children. Children can't escape that. 
They can't escape that. So that's the first thing I thought when COVID happened and they shut the schools down. The very first thing I thought is about was all the children now who are going to be stuck in abusive, sick situations where a lot of times school saves children from that. People say, people talk about schools being dangerous now. No, the home is the most dangerous place for most children. For a lot of children, being in the school is the safest part of the day. Okay? You have children who are raised in all kinds of sick, abusive situations. And ever since, you know, like in the past, like this since this year, I've heard so many stories of mothers and fathers that shooting their children, killing them in the sleep constantly. When you're a kid, you can't get away from that. So to me, the fact that people are just so selfish, you know, in their thinking, because the whole time that COVID was happening, the people, of course, the people I know who have kids are good parents. So they're like, oh, I actually love this and my child is thriving. People weren't thinking, okay, your child is lucky. But a lot of kids aren't in the, 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 don't have a home like your child has, where they're being nourished and cared for. Imagine the children now who are stuck at home in these abusive situations, there's no out, there's nobody to help them. That's the type of stuff I think about. And I feel like, I don't know, it's just, it just disgusts me. So I'm just going to say that from what I saw, um, like, and, and, and I will, will post some other YouTubers, because um, I'm going to repost this to my YouTube. So I will post some other YouTubers' videos below my video. And I kind of, you know, um, it, when you see clips of it in different places. I haven't seen the whole video. They're trying to scrub the internet of it. But if you even see 20 seconds of it, you will understand how inappropriate and absolutely disgusting it is. There's nothing at all that Tiffany Haddish or Aerie Spears can say to defend themselves, okay? To me, it's so bad, I feel like they should just kill themselves, okay? Because even in jail, it won't be okay for them. Just kill yourself. And if you think that sounds harsh, go check out the details behind what happened. And I think I've said everything that I need to say. I wanted to make sure I got all my points across. A lot of times when the videos are over, I remember things I meant to say that I didn't say. But I think I've said everything I needed to say. Highly disturbing. Shame on all of you, okay? Every single last goddamn one of you who didn't want to believe it because, oh, it couldn't be, oh, it's a conspiracy, could da, 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 da. like, now listen. You said it was a Bill Cosby. It wasn't a Bill Cosby video, but he was making faces like Bill Cosby was making. Um, he was making like 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 the, the the faces that Bill Cosby made in his pudding videos with the eyes. He was making like little stupid faces like that. Yeah, people don't want to believe that Bill Cosby was a predator. I remember my dad is around Bill Cosby's age, maybe a couple years younger. My dad's eighty years old. My dad told me, okay. My dad told me it's called the the mind of a pedophile. Just look it up on YouTube. Aries Spears and Tiffany Hatch. My dad told me that back then. Because when people would say, how come those women didn't, like, in the 60s and 70s or whatever, didn't say anything back then if Bill Cosby raped them? My dad told me back then nobody gave a shit about a woman talking about her being raped. Nobody cared. I don't even know if there were laws about that back then. Okay? So when people, oh, how come they didn't say, and Bill Cosby was incredibly powerful. So when people keep talking about this race thing, I'm like, no, there's a man thing. There's a man privilege, no matter what race you are. If you're a man with money and privilege, you, you can supersede being black. Look at OJ, okay? Because he's an athlete. Everybody loves the athletes. Everybody loves their favorite superstar that they want to turn a blind eye. Like, again, they don't believe that this person was a murderer. They don't want to believe that this person was a child molester. Nobody wants to believe it. And then when you have the money, when you go to court, what supersedes race is money, okay? OJ won against a white woman, okay? Now, people will say white women have more privilege than a black man. Well, he was a black man athlete with money, and he got off, you know? And so the fact of the matter is, is that um, there's so much deception. I just remember when I was younger, I grew up in New York City. I remember when I was like 11, 12, people used to come up to me in the street in New York and t tell me I should model. Right, and they would invite me to, to a casting call or invite me to something. My mother came to me to with me to every single thing I went to. I never went to anything by myself. Then, when I was like 18, 19, I remember like I have a vague memory of I don't know, like it's a very vague memory now that I was supposed to be, I don't know if it was a photo shoot or something I was supposed to be doing with this man, and my dad dropped me off at the place 
and it was in Harlem. And then like right after my dad left, I just know my dad appeared back again. And again, it's a vague memory. I just know that my dad was like, not he knew something was up with this dude. He knew, my dad knew that something was not right. And at this point, I'm not a minor anymore. But my dad came back and it was like, no, like shut that shit down. You know, it was in the man's face. Because men say things about men that other men don't see. I mean, that, that, that not other men don't see, I'm sorry. Men say things about men that women may not see. And when you're young, you're naive, okay? When you're 18, 19, 20, you're fucking naive. I saw people prey on young people. And your protection has to come from your parents. And having a father is important. There is a, um, I mean, because even, like, think about Usher. I, Usher's mom let him go live with Diddy when he was a teenager. I know some shit with him. Would his father have allowed him to do that? I don't know. Okay? And you have to have a scary father. That's about that life. Now, there's this actress I know of. I'm not going to say her name, but she's a very, she's a young actress. She's very accomplished. Done a lot of major projects. And her father, one of my best friends, is very good friends with her dad. And her dad, if you just see a picture of her dad... He looks like he will have you dead tomorrow if you if you fuck with it. Like you could just see on his face, like he's not to be fucked with. So I know that his daughter has not had to go through these things in the entertainment industry because of her dad. So I don't think that everybody in the entertainment industry ends up being pulled into the bullshit, but I think most do. I think the ones that escape it are the ones that had parents who had who who were right there, right there. All up in the mix. The second you let your kid go live with somebody or go do something, nah, you got to be there. You know, because this mother wasn't there. She claimed she didn't know what the, what the children would do. I don't know. But it's highly disturbing, okay? If you're, 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 you know, there's so many YouTubers that be on it. You can look on YouTube. Every single YouTube video I look at has different pieces of the story that is more and more disturbing. Show clips of the videos and everything not okay i'm telling you right now there's nothing anybody can say to defend it defend them no way no how it is disgusting it is sick and it is disturbing and if you look at the comments of anybody who's seen the video they say that they say it so those who just need to jump off a cliff okay and i'm gonna end it with that um to those of you who have been molested as children my heart goes out to you i'm sorry I hope that um, you can find healing and peace. And I think that people um, really need to speak up. And there needs to be real conversations around this. Because people aren't having real conversations about this. How is this happening? Why is this such an epidemic? This, this is the reason why I went into science. But I like to ask questions and figure out the reasons for things. Okay? Why is this like this? Why? Let's, let's activate some critical thinking skills. Because people seriously lack them. They seriously do. Seriously. I can't believe how many people are so slow, asleep at the wheel, and naive as fuck. I really can't. It's shocking. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm in that there. And uh, I'm just going to say that um, I feel like, I mean, there's so much more to say. But I'm just going to stop it here because everything else I want to say, I probably just need to save it for my other page, um, The Renaissance Amazon, which I cannot go live on right now. They have me blocked, but I will post it on that page too and all my Instagram pages, I mean YouTubes. So follow me everywhere. Um, and yeah, please, have you seen the video? What do you think? Comment if you want. I know you're going to have the same opinion as me that it's disgusting. Um, but yeah, I'm going I'm to I'm let this be where it is. And I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.